Welcome to MCOM Solutions. My name is Jake. Today we're going to talk a little bit of a darker subject. We're going to talk emergency communications and what we've learned so far from the aftermath of the hurricane in North Carolina, Helena, and its primary devastation there uh, in the Appalachian Mountain regions of North Carolina. And what can we learn from this? We talk a lot here about Mesh-tastic and other mesh radio systems. Uh, we've talked a little bit about other communicators like satellite communicators. And on my other channel, Raven and Acres, I've talked a lot about GRMS and a little bit about amateur radio. I am a licensed amateur radio operator. I'm a, well, when I'm in the States, I'm an active member of an uh, amateur radio emergency services team. Uh, I'm retired military. And so I'm just giving you some of those bona fides just to understand where some of my opinions get formed from. And I also have an educational background in emergency management. So I understand a lot of these things, maybe uh, some of the minutia of some of these events, what should be going on behind the scenes between your local, your state and federal level uh, emergency management teams that should be assisting the people there. But what we've seen so far is what? Primarily citizens helping citizens. And uh, honestly, it's inspiring because that is the true nature in, in my humble opinion of America, right? That is the true nature of us uh, helping each other. Um, so, but what we've seen on the emergency communication side has been good and bad. Um, there's lots of reports out there, quite a few other, uh, YouTubers that I follow. You may follow too, because we have somewhat similar content is the, um, the use of like the cheap Chinese, you know, bao fangs and other types of handheld radios has been uh, very prevalent and it has saved lives. And just as a reminder, you shouldn't need this reminder. And it's pretty sad that some people do need to give these reminders because some of the emergency nets back there, uh, the net control was reminding people, this is an emergency. You don't have to have an SEC call sign to break in. If you have, you need assistance. Um, why, why? Yeah. Um, I am, what I consider a next generation amateur ham radio operator. Um, I don't advertise my call sign on this channel for one, for privacy purposes for two. Uh, it's not who I am. I do a lot in my local community when I'm back in the States to assist uh, with preparation uh, rehearsals. We have a very active Aries team, a very well supported Aries team from our local uh, government and local community. So we have some resources that many other areas teams don't have, but I feel like that's because of the leadership we have within our organization that is open to the community is well known in the community, um, is not a sad ham and not, uh, the old kind of stereotype curmudgeon hams that are unapproachable and rude to people. Um, about the hobby gatekeeping, right? We've, we've talked about this in the past. I know I've talked about it on some other videos. I can't remember if it's here, Ravenwood acres, my other channel, but the point is, is, um, you know, this is, this is what we train for. That's what amateur radio is. Yeah. It's a hobby to learn and more about radio, but like one of the biggest selling features any ham is going to tell you is, oh, well, you know, we're here for emergency communications. Well, if it's an emergency and you're being a jerk or trying to cut someone out of a, off, tell them they shouldn't be on a repeater because they're calling for help. They need water. They need food. They need rescue. Um, you're the problem and you're, while you're sitting in your, you know, ham shack with running water and power, and a fridge full of food, uh, pretty easy for you to start passing judgment on other people trying to get help. Um, it, yeah, it, it's it's sad. It, it is really sad. And I hope that the next generation uh, of hams 
amateur radio operators out there, we can change this culture for a better. And, and don't get me wrong, I know plenty, many of the members of the Aries team I'm in, um, the Aries team I'm in is, um, they're older, much older than me. I'm one of the younger members and I'm not that young. Um, and I think there's like one member that's younger than me. And then there's like two around the same age as me and everybody else is in their, their late, you know, early to late sixties, approaching seventies, some of them. And we've lost members in the recent years, uh, you know, passing away due to health problems. Uh, and then other people within the community we've lost, uh, you know, and I've, cause I've went to assist, uh, their family members and stuff who pack up all their, a lot of ham <laughs> radio equipment, um, and tower taking down towers. That's a big one. And, um, but I digress. It's the, the point is, is I've met some um, amazing people within community. And if you are one of those amazing people, we need to be calling out the jerks. We need to be calling out the jerks because this is what we do here. This is that, that, for me, that is my purpose, why I got a license and why I'm studying to get my journal license. If I get off my butt and actually go take it, well, I got to do it online because I'm in Europe, but yeah. So why, why, why are we doing this? Anyways, I'm definitely getting off tangent here, but. Okay. So to wrap this up, as far as lessons learned, I'd say, as I mentioned there in the beginning, having, uh, even a cheap, Chinese handheld radio programmed and knowing how to, you know, push that talk, that PTT and talk to your local repeater or your local simplex frequencies, whatever it is, is key. Um, so those individuals, I would take my hat off for you, hats off, because they didn't just go out and buy the piece of equipment. They at least, even though as a clear in some incidents, many of them didn't have an FCC license. They still knew how to use the radio and had it programmed. Those are key because a lot of people have that bad habit of buying equipment and never learning how to use it and thinking, well, I'll learn how to use it when I need it. That's a, that's a bad plan. So uh, emergency communications plans is a good way to work through some of that stuff. I have a video on that. I'll link that over here um, that I did. It has a questionnaire kind of get you started. Um, Next set of radio equipment would probably be beneficial in something like this is something for over the horizon, over the horizon, because if you weren't able to hit that repeater, in this sense, most people, it seems like are able to hit that repeater that everyone seems to be using and serving, I think three counties, which is pretty impressive. Uh, I don't know the square mileage of those counties, but <clears throat> still impressive is understanding your local area, right? This goes into the planning process. If you understand your local area, understand where the repeaters are, knowing that you can hit the repeater from your home. If it's up, does it have emergency backup power? Can you call the owners of it? You can look that up on repeater book, figure out who it is that owns the repeater, who's servicing and maintaining it. Have a quick conversation with them. Hey, just doing some emergency planning and wondered, uh, does that uh, repeater have a backup generator? Oh, okay, yeah. Oh, what's the, is there a plan in place to, uh, um, you know, keep it refueled or how long will it run? You know, those are things you should know. Um, and that's just a part of the planning process. We're going to be doing some more videos on that here in the future, but, uh, having somebody in your local community, whether that's an Aries team or whatever that has uh, Nimbus near incident Skywave antenna set up is ideal for something like this because it shoots that signal straight up, straight back down, gives you about 300 to uh, 500 miles, I think, um, of, of a area it's designed for that whole regional disaster situation, understanding emergency management. We're going to do some videos on that probably over at Rainbow Node Acres about the fact that there's a system in place for your local municipalities to get you resources and supply and assistance. Uh, and if your local municipality is ill prepared, that could be where some of the delays are coming from. So Facebook posts and stuff like that. Yes, I do understand that FEMA and other agencies tend to scrub some of that, but <clears throat> there is a official process, you know, typical government bureaucracy. So yeah, would, I just have to touch on this next, would Mestastic be useful? 
I don't think so really. I mean, maybe within a very small community, but your handheld radio would probably be just work just as easy. Um, and then you're not worrying about charging your phone, charging the Nestastic radio, so on and so forth. And does your neighbor have one? Does, unless you've already pre-planned this. If it's in your plan, then maybe it'll work for you and you have some set up, some uh, you know, repeater nodes basically set up. But yeah, that's the only situation where Mestastic would probably be beneficial. So, and then worst case would be if you're a super remote person, having a satellite communicator could also be a lifesaver. Uh, be able to send that SOS or text message to uh, pre-designated individuals that have the app uh, set up outside the local region that can relay your needs to emergency responders or agencies, in this case, a lot of private citizens helping other American citizens. So, all right. So I hope you guys found this useful. If you did, please subscribe to the channel. Uh, check out our social media links, website. All those links would be down below. Uh, and we'll be doing much more videos on this topic in the future. So stay tuned for more of those videos. Thanks for watching.